I'm Tim Nugent. Uh, I'm from the University of Tasmania. I'm a PhD student there. I also answer to Mick Jones. Um, in case you ever hear anyone calling me that, that's why. Um, I, like I said, I'm from UTAS. That's what the weird, whatever that creature is. I think it's a lion. Uh, I'm also associated with Secret Lab, who some of the weird people who run it are hiding in the audience. Um, they do iPhone development mostly. Uh, I'm also part of them. Um, so what, what is this talk actually about? Well, this talk's going to talk about MapKit framework. Uh, the MapKit framework is pretty much just Google Maps when you break it down, how to put Google Maps onto your iPhone, essentially. Um, and it's basically really good for adding maps, uh, which is probably why it's called MapKit. Um, coming from Google Maps is both a blessing and a curse. Uh, it's a blessing because it means people immediately recognize it. They go, oh wow, that's Google Maps. Um, it's a bit of a curse because it means you're constrained by the iPhone, Google Maps terms and services, which aren't too restrictive, but make sure you read them before you go publishing stuff with this in it um, because it, you just have to be aware of them. Um, so the real meat of this talk is going to focus on three different things in MapKit, uh, MK Map View, MK Annotation, and MK Overlay. Uh, MK Map View is the actual map view itself, as in the actual map you're talking with. MK Annotation, I could best describe as those little red pins you see on the map if you ever use the iPhone map program for. And MK Overlay is something new that was introduced in what's now called iOS 4 uh, that allows you to draw essentially arbitrary things on top of the map and have them work at the correct zoom and rotation and anything like that. Um, so let's just get straight into it. Uh, MK, oh, sorry, before I do start, I did write in the abstract, I hope it was still in there, I haven't read it, that you no Coco-ish, because uh, I do do a lot of demos. There's a fair bit of code. Um, if you don't know much about Coco, this might be a little bit confusing. Um, sorry for that, uh, but it's just sort of how it is. But um, all right, so MK Map View, it's a child of UI view, and uh, it looks awfully a lot like a map, because it is one. Um, this is the easiest part of talk, because the map view itself is really, really stupidly simple to hook up and get running. It's everything else that takes a while to understand. Um, but basically, you, all you do is drag and drop a map, kit, a map view into your program, change a few properties to set what you're looking at, what it looks like, and you're good to go. So uh, what if you want to know what type of map it is? Well, there's this property here, uh, MK map type, map type. Um, it's got three different possibilities, standard, satellite, and hybrid. Standard is the traditional map, so it looks sort of like something that if you just start up Google Maps, it's the yellowy background saying, Lines, you know, this street's here, post office is here. Satellite is the satellite Google Earth sort of style. Um, so, you know, lots of overlaid images of satellite pictures. And uh, MK Map Type Hybrid is a combination of both. It's the satellite images with the street and directory information overlaid on top. Um, so, how would you actually change that? It's just a property, so just set map type and pick one of them. In this case, I've obviously called my map view map. Um, and yeah, it's pretty easy. So what do we actually look at? Well, there's this thing, there's a property inside our map view called MK coordinate region of the name, sorry, of type MK coordinate region called region. Um, what exactly is that? It's just a C struct. Um, so inside there, there's two components, a core location, CL location coordinate 2D called center. That's just a longitude and a latitude. So literally, I'm at this position, you know, minus 140 and 49. And a span, a span is another um, uh, struct with core location degrees in it called latitude and longitude delta. Um, what they are is the number of degrees of how far you want your map to be showing. Um, one, th this is one of the problems with how maps work. Because the Earth's a sphere and we're showing it on a rectangle, things don't always make sense with these numbers, your deltas. Keep that in mind, but basically if you're at the equator, one degree of latitude and longitude span is 111 by 111 kilometers, approximately. That changes as you go north and south, um, but that's sort of a, a good metric I like to keep in my head of how big each of these grids are. Um, it is really something that when you're playing with MapKit, you're just going to have to experiment to find a, a, a span that works for you, but just worth keeping in mind. Oh, we'll talk a bit slow. So how do you change the region? Well, there's a method called set region animated. You give it a new region, and this animated is a Boolean um, if you say yes, it does a nice smooth transition from one area that you're currently at to the next, so it doesn't suddenly appear. 
If you say no for the animator, it literally just ju jumps to there, you don't see it move, and then it starts loading the map. Um, so there are a couple other useful properties that map view has. Um, well, it's got hundreds actually, but these are two of the more useful ones. Uh, so set zoom enabled and set scroll enabled. They take booleans. Uh, if you set them to no, then you can't scroll or zoom, um, depending on which one you set. Uh, that's really a uh, program by program basis is whether you want to play with that. I just thought I should bring them up because I've used them myself before. Um, so I'm going to jump straight into a demo here. So, hey, it didn't break. Is that coming across all right? Yeah. I hope that comes across all right. All right, so I'm going to create, ooh, let's push that over a little bit. I'm going to create a new view based iOS program. Uh, let's save that on my desktop. It's called Demo World. So uh, let's go in here. Let's open all this stuff up because I like to see it all. That's it. I normally have a much larger screen than this, so it's probably not coming across very well. Sorry about that. Um, first thing we need to do is we want to add in an existing framework. We want to add in the, where are you? MapKit framework, obviously. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our view controller. And we want to import the MapKit headers. So we've got all MapKit going. Uh, next thing we want to do is fix this awful default spacing that Xcode uses. And include a A, a IB outlet for a map type, map, map type, what, map type, gosh, sorry about that, a map view called map, save all that, open up our nib, we wait, cool, all right, what do we got here, there it is, what, where is it? That's a little spooky. Why is that not there? The library's on top of it. Ah, I just closed it, didn't I? Arrgh. Sorry, I've never actually used a projector before while doing this. I did a demo at 1024 by 768, but it was a little bit different. Um, so we just look for our map view here. Drag it in, save that. Oh, go away, library. No. Ah, all right. Sorry, I've been using Xcode 4 recently. I prefer its way of interface building stuff. Um, so then if we just run that. Ooh, that's going to. We wait a little while. Sorry, this is going across my iPad for actually loading stuff because we don't have net. And lo and behold, we've got a map. Yay! Um, it's scrollable. Not much, because we're pretty far zoomed out. It's also zoomable, so we can actually zoom all the way in. And this is the map type standard that I was talking about, just a traditional map with the yellow lines for roads and that. So if we now go to our view controller again, have a look at our uh, no, I want the view did load method, didn't I? Sorry. This is very different at this resolution. And first thing we want to do is set the delegate to itself. Um, probably the coolest thing about MapKit, in my opinion, is all the delegate methods. There's millions of them, um, and they do basically everything you could ever want. If you're ever stuck going, oh, geez, how would I do that? Check the delegate methods. There's probably one that's doing it. I've run into this a few times. I'm like, wow, how am I ever going to do that? Had a look at the delegate methods. Like, oh, Apple's already written it for me. Isn't that nice? So that's the first thing you want to do. Next thing, we might just set the map type. Uh, I'm going to make mine MK map type hybrid. Um, and then have a look at that. And it's changed. Yay, isn't that great? Um, so now we may as well change what we're looking at. Ah, very good. Thank you, Xcode. Sorry, forgot that. Got to be the delegate there. 
I'm actually going to make an MK coordinate region. I'm going to call it region. Uh, I'm also going to make an MK coordinate span and call it span. I'm very original in my naming, as you can see. Can you all still hear me? You notice I'm changing my voice and talking. Um, so first thing, longitude delta, I'm going to put that at about that, which is a number I like. That's pretty far zoomed in. That's sort of about maybe 100 meters, roughly, is what it'll look like. And I'll do the same for the latitude delta. Now, I'm actually going to cheat here because I never remember the correct numbers. And I'm going to grab that. And that there, I'm setting the center coordinate of the region. It's latitude and it's longitude. That's actually my house, uh, or as close as I can guess it. Um, And hook it up. And then finally, last thing we do, set region, region, animated, yes. Not that it's really going to matter in this case. And unless I've screwed up, we're looking over my house at a zoom out of about that delta. Uh, like I said, picking the numbers for the deltas more of guess and check I've found than anything else. It really depends on what you're doing, but I like that. It's my house sort of hiding around there. Right, um, so let's get back into the talk now. So that's actually pretty much everything I want to talk about map view, because map view itself is bloody easy. Um, I, I just took that all up in 10 seconds, as you just saw, and that's straight away a, a map that you can do everything with. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. You can scroll it. You can look at what type it is. That's pretty much all map view is. Map view itself is pretty easy. It's the other stuff that takes up time. So the first the other things I want to talk about is called MK annotation. Um, and those, like I said at the start, are essentially those little red pins and green pins. If you ever use the map program on your iPhone or your iPad, that's what they are. Uh, they don't have to be pins. They can be any sort of thing. If you've ever used that little blue dot that shows you where you are on the map, that's also an annotation. But basically, an annotation is anything that conforms to the MK annotation protocol, which means if you've already got some sort of data structure that already exists, just make it uh, conform to the protocol and chuck in a CL location coordinate 2D called coordinate, and voila, you're an annotation. Yay! Um, that's great. It makes it easy. It means if you've got something set up that you want to show on a map, all you have to do is add a location to it, and it's good to go. Um, but the first thing is, uh, the MK annotation is the model, not the view. The MK annotation view is the view. It's kind of cool how they picked that name there so it would fit in. Um, but whenever you're scrolling through your map, if you hover over, if the region is hovering over where an annotation would be, the map's delegate, in this case ourself, gets asked to provide a view for that map, uh, for that annotation, sorry. By default, uh, this will actually be the MK pin annotation, which is the little pins, and it'll also be red. That's the default, which is really nice. It means if you don't really care what they look like, you can just add the annotations. Don't bother providing a view, and MapKit will do it all for you. Um, but the annotations do do more than that. They actually allow you to determine what the map, what the annotation can actually do when you click on it, whether, it drag, whether it's draggable, all sorts of different things. Um, so there's a couple of different built-in annotations, uh, MK placemark and MK user location. That's an MK placemark right there. Uh, notice its view is the pin view, that little red dot, the little red pin, and it's actually saying blah, 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 blah. It's actually saying one infinite loop Cupertino. That's Apple's uh, headquarters. The reason it's saying that is because if you ever ask MapKit where you are, it says you're in Cupertino. Totally not narcissistic there. Um, but yep. Cool. Yay. Um, so MK placemark, that holds sort of information, address, city, state, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's actually, if you're inter interested in building one yourself, uh, it comes from the address book person details. I've never really done it. Um, I just thought I'd describe it briefly. Um, but the easy way to get it is from reverse geocoding. Uh, brilliant segue there into reverse geocoding. Um, so reverse geocoding is pretty much normal geocoding, but in reverse, hence the name. Uh, with, normal ge with normal geocoding, you go, hey, I'm at 3 Newt Drive, Austin's Ferry, Tasmania. And it goes, oh, that's location. Do, 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 you know, whatever that is, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head there. Um, in this case, we're doing it backwards. We're saying we're at location, latitude, longitude here. Tell me where that is. And it goes, all right, sure. Uh, so to do that, there's a few steps. 
you create a MK reverse geocoder, you set its delegate, you tell it to start. Uh, the delegate will then either get a success or a failed message. Um, if it succeeds, it returns an MK placemark, which you can then use to extract the information out of, or you can just drop it on the map. If it fails, it throws a, an error, which I tend to just ignore because I'm lazy. Uh, MK user location is a little bit weird. It's another annotation built in. Uh, unlike every other annotation that you're ever using, you never have to add it to the map view. It's always there. You just have to tell map view whether you want to see it or not. Um, it's also weird in that it doesn't have an associated view. It seems to just know what it is and deal with it itself. Really breaks the paradigm of the whole model view because this guy seems to have it all in one. But it's Apple and they like to do whatever they feel like. Um, but yeah, the cool thing is it's self-updating. Uh, so as you're moving around with your iPhone or your iPad, it'll actually be changing its position as you're going along. Uh, if you're doing things in the simulator like I am, it's always going to say you're at one infinite loop Cupertino, which really does hamper your testing. So if you do want to test stuff using user location, you're going to have to get it on the device and start walking around with it. So how do you add an annotation? Pretty simply, the map view, add annotation, and then your annotation. What this does is it actually chucks it onto an NS array of annotations that the map view has as a property called annotations. It seems Apple's original in their name as I am. Um, which means you've got this huge big array of all these annotations, which is a kind of convenient way of accessing them later if you want to change one of them. You can just go through, tweak something, put it back, and be good. Which leads, of course, to another demo. Right, so I'm going to, first of all, add ourselves in as a reverse geocoder delegate. And Oops. I'm going to call mine GoGo. -Go. Not a great name, um, but it'll do. Uh, Coordinate. Um, so this is just creating an inst Oh, no, I forgot the C. Um, so this is just creating and instantiating a, um, a, a MK reverse geocoder I've called GoGo. -Go. Um, horrible with names. Don't ever get me to name things. And it takes in a core location coordinate. Luckily, we already have one, our region.center, that we were using to focus on my house. So we can just use that again. And should we have missed anything? We set it to delegate, set it to ourself again. How do I do that? And we tell it to start. Um, so that'll actually, when, when I run this, this will actually start going off and it'll actually go poll Google um, for the actual information that it needs, uh, which is something to be wary of. Because these do actually do a fair bit of net talking, um, don't be generating these guys constantly. Only generate them when you need them, because uh, they do use a fair bit of net. They do take a while to generate. But that does mean we also need, uh, oops, um, we do need the uh, the delegate methods. Ah, don't trust Xcode's autocomplete. It's awful. This is the error method. There, um, is that visible? I'm hoping it is, but yeah, you know, I'm pretty close though. So. Uh, so yeah, geocoder did fail with error. Uh, that's what happens when it screws up. Um, obviously, I hope you handle your errors better than I do. Um, but yeah, we don't really need to know for this purposes. And the other one is did find place mark. That one actually returns a place mark, an MK place mark, which we know is an annotation. If it succeeds, so then all we do is and now if I run this, assuming it can actually succeed and not just say yay! Um, and that's our MK place mark there. I can click on it, it's telling me, telling me, telling you guys my address. Um, so hopefully there's no creepy people who want to stalk me. Uh, but yeah, that's an MK placemark. 
Um, I might actually just comment that out so it doesn't, ooh, doesn't get in the road. And then I'll just add in here. Um, now I'm going to have to zoom out because like I said, it thinks we're in Cupertino. Should have probably changed the region. The zooming out is really slow. And there we are. Putting poor iPad through a lot of strain here. And current location, like it's telling us there. Um, and if you were using the actual device, this would actually be updating, so it wouldn't be completely useless, but, you know. Um, there is a quite useful delegate method um, called map. Uh, I just want to get this right. So, did update user location. That's actually called, uh, your delegate's actually informed of that every single time that user location moves. Um, so it's actually a good way of tracking where your user's going without you having to actually ask the user location, where are you now? Then wait five seconds, where are you now? And wait five seconds, where are you now? Um, which makes life a lot easier. The disadvantage is it doesn't really, you don't really have much control over it like you do with core location. Because uh, core location lets you set accuracy and all sorts of other stuff that you don't get here. But there is one advantage to this. It means we can actually go sort of, uh, see, I'll Uh, grab the actual coordinate out of the user location there. This thing always initially confused me when I saw it in Apple's documentation. All it's saying is if there is actually a current location, do something, which is you know, conceptually obvious, but there should always be a current location, even if when it's initial it should be 0, 0, 0. But for some reason that doesn't fire when it's 0, 0. I don't know why. It's some Apple gypsy magic that they've refused to share. It just happens to work. And then in here, we can actually kind of copy our code from up here. Paste in like so. Just change this. Uh, dot location. Uh, I can never remember which, what it is. I'm going to look at my cheats again, sorry. If you are doing demos, make sure you've got a cheat sheet. Ah, there we go. Oop. What have I done here? Cheat sheet. Ah. No? Sorry. That should now work. And give a second for the map load. And there we are. That, this method, because it's called every single time that the user moves, that means you actually have a constantly updating map following the user, uh, which is really quite nice. It saves you a lot of time if you had to move it yourself and work out where you were. Um, but yep, back to Keynote now, I think. Um, so there is core location. I appear to be running a little slow, so I won't actually go into core location. Um, but basically, it's if you need better control than what the MK user location, uh, the MK user location annotation actually lets you do. Uh, basically, you set a core location manager, you create a core location manager, set its delegate and its accuracy level. That's the first nice thing. You can actually say, how I want the accuracy best. I want it sort of 10 meter accuracy. I want 100 meter. I want a kilometer sort of accuracy. Uh, you then tell it to start updating. And every time it gets a location from the GPS, it tells its delegate. Um, the nice thing about this is it tells its delegate when that happens, but it also tells you your old location as well as your new. So, so that it allows you to sort of do a bit more thinking depending on whether you want to actually bother moving the map if they've only moved, say, a meter. There's no point in really moving the map that tiny little bit if they've only moved that little. Um, so it's just a nice way to get better control. Uh, I'm not going to do the demo because I'm running a little slowly. That's why I put that demo in there in case I was running slowly. So, you know, th that's great so far. We've got these little pins. We've got that blue dot that moves around. Uh, but what if we want more? You know, what if we want a hedonism bot shaped pin with a biohazard symbol, a button, and it changes the text? You know, what if we want that? 
Uh, the first thing is, like I said, the annotation is the model. That's right, the model. Uh, the annotation has absolutely no control whatsoever what it looks like. It's really annoying when you're trying to find help online for this stuff and people are confusing the view and the annotation and the answers that they're getting from experts are just all over the place because everyone's using the terms interchangeably. So the annotation does not care what it looks like. It doesn't even know. It's just the model. The delegate is responsible for determining what the view of your annotation is going to be. Um, so the first view, and probably, to be honest, the one you're going to use 9 out of 10 times, depending on what you're doing, is the MK pin annotation view. Um, it's quite good. It's got a few really nice things. It comes in three fabulous colors, red, uh, green, and purple, which is meant to be used for start location, stop location, and points of interest from memory. You don't have to use them for that. Use them for anything you want. Who cares? Apple's not going to know. Um, to set that, there's a pin color parameter, um, and then there's just an enumeration in there of MK pin annotation color, and that's got sort of like MK pin annotation red, annotation blue, annotation, uh, sorry, not blue, green and purple. Um, and it can be dropped, fancy-like, as I like to call, onto the map, which I really like. I think it looks great. You just have this animates dropped equals yes, and whenever you scroll over the map, it just goes and drops a little pin there, which I really like. I think that looks great. Um, but if you do really want a custom appearance, um, you have to create your own MK annotation view. It's not very hard. In fact, it's quite easy to just change the image because there's an image property inside MK annotation view. You just pass in a UI image and it puts it there. Uh, do scale your UI image first so you're not having this gigantic annotation. And scale it in like Photoshop first. Don't, don't scale it in the iPhone. It's just going to drag the poor battery down. Um, if you really want, you can use core graphics and just override the draw rec method of the annotation view. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. I'm not a huge fan of that. But if you really want to, feel free to. Um, if you don't specify an annotation view, uh, it will default to the pin annotation view. Um, so there's these things called callouts. Um, so you've got the title. It's obviously the title, subtitle. And you've got left and right callouts, which are just for extra functionality. Uh, whenever you click on the annotation, these callouts happen. And um, the first two there, title and subtitle, are methods that if your annotation, whatever that object is, has these methods, and your annotation view supports callouts, then title and subtitle appear. Um, if you don't have that, you won't have anything happening. Uh, so let's just jump back to Xcode again. So whoop, I'm going to add new file. Objective C file. Uh. Adding the required property of a coordinate there. Um, by the way, this code's very rushed, so if there's something wrong with it, please don't hit me. Um, so that's all we need to make an annotation there, like I said. Uh, I'm going to actually add in, obviously, the ns string. And the subtitle string. Uh, oh, I meant to synthesize. Oh, yeah. Ooh, dirty hacks, sorry. Um, and we obviously need a constructor of some sort. Should be uh, title string. Uh, NS string has two S's. So that should be our constructor there, you know, in it with coordinate, title, title uh, subtitle. And all we do is, ooh dear. Like I said, don't trust Xcode's autocomplete. It appears to be awful in three. I've got used to fours, it's so much better. Uh, dirty hacks, I've got dirty hacks.
Obviously you'd be doing this better than the way I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I'm making it up as I'm going along here. So that should be a working constructor there. Unless I've screwed up. Please shout out if I have. All right. Okay, so that should be there, our working custom annotation. Um, it's got a constructor there that allows to initialize it with a coordinate and uh, put in some strings for the callouts, the title and subtitle. Then if we just go back here. Uh, include, uh, I should probably go on the head of it, uh, who cares? We're being awful coders today, or I am. I'm sure you guys are doing fine. Uh, what should we call it? Uh, my annotation. Um, so it now wants a location. Uh, once again, I'm just going to use my house because I'm lazy. I'm not going to bother finding coordinates for a new one. Wants a title string. Um, what did I have? I had McJones's house, didn't I? And a subtitle string. Uh, that would be in this case, you know, Tazzy. And is that all correct? I think that should be correct. Sorry? Uh, at sign string. Ah, at sign. Thank you. <laughs> It'll cause all sorts of havoc. Um, and then we can just add it. Exactly like in the slide. And assuming I have an incompatible type for argument, what have I done? Sorry? Uh, that doesn't affect it. What have I done here? <laughs> I have to go to my cheat sheet. Ah. I believe I cheated somewhere and missed something important. I have to import MapKit. Good point. Hmm. I forgot MapKit. This is why you should never do live demos. No? It's still not working? Ah, uh, where's my cheat sheet? Cheating time. Sorry, I thought I was in my header file. That's still getting errors. Oh. Why is that there? What have I done? Probably screwed up somewhere really badly here. Oh, well done. I'm going to check my cheat sheet. Sorry. Let's do that. Property coordinate does not match IVAR coordinate. I'm not sure why that's happening. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to go to here's one I prepared earlier trick. Documents, development, uh, dev world demo should be it. I think this one actually does more because it's the complete one. That looks the same to me. I don't know what it's doing. It's lying to me. Um, Actually, going to comment out some of this stuff here. Uh, 
And there's our annotation code there. I think it's the same. I think it's lying to me just to tease me. Um, if I go to the delegate method here, map view, view for annotation. Um, first important thing there is it says, if annotation is kind of class MK user location class, return nil. That's sort of saying about MK user location being a little bit weird. Uh, not really sure why it doesn't seem to have a view associated with it. If you detect that your annotation that's currently in the view is an MK user location, just return nil. This is actually copied from Apple's example code. It always confused me. It doesn't make any sense, but who am I to argue with them? Um, and here, here's our MK annotation view, custom view. Um, we're actually in it, uh, initing it with an annotation, which is our annotation. This reuse identifier is a string. It's actually really important you use this in your own code, um, but because I've only got one annotation, I'm not bothering. What the reuse identifier is is a string that you pass in for each of your annotation views that are going to be the same. So if I was going to have hundreds of these hedonism bot annotations, I would make a reuse uh, identifier string to call it. And what happens is whenever you scroll the view of the map away from the annotation, uh, MapKit actually stores the view in a queue for later, uh, which means when it then scrolls over, it means it can just grab the view based on its reuse identifier and chuck it back in. It doesn't have to regenerate it. It's a performance issue, and it's really important that you do use them if you're going to have more than one uh, uh, annotation that's the same view. But in this case, being lazy, like I said, so I'm not bothering. Uh, this is just creating a UI image called Hedonism Bot. Uh, it's actually, if you want to see what it looks like, oh, I like Futurama. Um, I'm then actually setting the image that I'm allowing callouts. If I set this to no, um, when you click on it, nothing will happen. Uh, so you need that. Then the other thing I'm doing is this is some more stuff for callouts. Those two side callouts that I showed you, the left and right accessory callout views, uh, callout accessory. Yeah, I got it right. Um, they're just UI views themselves. So you can stick anything in there. In the left one, I've made an image view. I've stuck that left.png, which is a biohazard symbol, and right callout view, uh, which I've just made a button. I haven't hooked the button up to any action, but if you've done any UI code, I'm sure you can figure out how to do the next step. I then just return the view. Then, assuming I haven't commented out something important, I clearly did comment out something important. Uh, there we go. And there we have a hedonism bot um, annotation. I can click on it. It's got those call-out views. It's got the title and subtitle. I can even click on the button. It doesn't do anything. But that there is how you'd make a custom annotation, minus my screwing up and wasting 10 minutes. Um, so that's pretty much all that you can do with MK annotations. You can do a few more things. Uh, there is actually dragging support. Um, I've had nightmares trying to get this work, so I'm not going to go through it because it's hard. Um, if you want to do it, good luck. Read the documentation. I'm sure someone's done it successfully. I haven't. Um, but that leads us on to our final bit here, uh, MK overlays. Um, MK overlays were new in iOS 4, uh, and they let you pretty much put anything you feel like on top of the map. Um, they're based on the MK annotation protocol, um, but instead of having a coordinate, they've got what's called a map rect property, which contains the overlay. So a map rect is essentially just a, a rectangle that says, I take up this much space. So when it's drawn, it uses that to determine where to position it. Um, so there's the MK overlay view. It actually does the same job as an annotation overview, Whoa. as in it determines what it looks like and what it can do. But unlike the annotation view where it falls back to the pin, you can't do that uh, with this. If you don't specify a view, absolutely nothing's going to appear on the screen. Um, so make sure that if you are playing with overlays, you have a view. Um, and annotations go on top of overlays, which are on top of the map. So if you've got multiple things, they're going to stack like that with annotations being the highest, then overlays, then the map. And the overlays and annotations themselves are drawn according to their position in the arrays that map view has as a property. Um, so it's probably a good time to talk about the Mercator projection really, really quickly. Um, Google Maps and uh, pretty much everything uses the Mercator projection, and so does MapKit because it's based on Google Maps. This has weird results. If you look, all those dots are exactly the same radius and distance apart from one another. Um, this is a really great way of showing what's wrong with uh, trying to stretch a sphere onto a rectangle. They look nothing at all alike, 
but they are the same size. So depending on how far zoomed out your overlay is, it's going to look crazy. Um, but thankfully, Apple have helped. Uh, basically, you don't specify things in coordinates. You specify things in MK map points and MK map recs. Uh, there's also some really nice code to switch between the two, depending on what you're doing, that Apple have written for us, which is great. Uh, the thing is that a map rect is probably going to change depending on how far zoomed in or out you are, whereas a coordinate isn't. So that's why you store your data in coordinates, but then convert it before you use it. Uh, it's just important to know that in case you're doing certain things. But the built-in overlays are pretty easy to use. Uh, you don't have to worry too much. So once again, another brilliant segue there. Uh, the built-in uh, overlays are polyline, polygon, and circle. Each of these have a custom view associated with it. Uh, but like I said, you still have to define it. You can't just assume because it is a circle, it's going to use the circle view for you. Uh, so first up is MK polyline. That's essentially the, hey, I want a route, pretty much. Um, all you need to do is create that is a array of CL location coordinate 2Ds uh, and all map points, if you want to use them, and a count. Uh, the count is the number of elements in the array. Not sure why it can't work that out on itself. Um, the thing is, this is a C array, not an NS array. Don't get that wrong. I got it wrong first time. I spent like 10 minutes trying to work out why that was happening. Bash my head against the screen, then I realized that I'm an idiot. Um, the other thing is, this is immutable. Uh, don't assume that this, you could set this up to grab coordinates from where you're walking, and it'll draw following you like a breadcrumb path. That won't happen. Once you've created this array of coordinates, that's fixed. You can't change them. You'll have to destroy the annotation, then create a new, uh, sorry, destroy the overlay, and then create a new one if you actually want to have the coordinates change. Um, so MK polygon, that polygon's meant to be over my house, but it's just slightly to the right because I suck at guessing coordinates. Uh, it's pretty much the same. You've got a count and an array of coordinates. Um, it's also immutable, but I don't think people expect the polygon to change, so I don't really have to point that out. Circle, circle's pretty easy. You have a radius in meters. It's technically not meters, it's CL distances, core location distances, which happens to be meters. Um, and a center coordinate or a map rect. Um, if you want to have the map rect, you just say, I take up this rectangle, and then it works out the center, it works out the radius. Whatever's easier. Um, so how do you add these fantastic overlays? Uh, you just go add overlay, my overlay, onto the map. Exactly the same as annotations, because they're based on annotations. My last demo here. I'm going to use my example code so I don't screw up. So this is a circle overlay here. Uh, so circle with center coordinate. I'm passing in my house again. Uh, radius 200. So it's going to make a 200 meter radius circle focusing on my house. Um, I'm adding it there. Skip down past that. This here. is a nice little thing. Um, when, when they introduced this new coordinate thing, MK map points and uh, MK map recs, to deal with overlays, they also put in the bounding map rec, sorry, the visible map rec for the map view. This is essentially the same thing as the region. It's just using the different coordinate system instead of longitude and latitude. It's using map points and map recs. Um, so if you really want, you can just set the bounding, the visible map rec of your map kit of your map view to the bounding map rec of your overlay, and then it'll center perfectly on it, uh, which is nice and easy. Uh, so we've got the same sort of check in here as we had. So if we are a MK circle, if I, um, we then create the view, we in it with an overlay. Uh, this is just core graphic stuff, so we're just setting the stroke color to be red, uh, line width of about two. Um, we're then filling it with red uh, with a bit of alpha so we can see through it. We're then just returning that view. So if I then run it, Uh, we get this circle of 200 meters radius uh, with hedonism bot directly in the center because I forgot to turn him off. Um, so that's the MK circle. It's pretty easy, um, but I'm pretty sure that would be quite useful in a lot of situations. So I'm going to comment out the circle again. This here's my polygon. Uh, so it's got some points there. Obviously, I'm hoping that if you were using this in a real situation, you wouldn't just have this big, ugly array. You'd be scanning them from a CSV or a KML or something like that and generating it that way. This is for a demo, so I've just physically, I just went to Google Maps and guessed the points and stuck them in there um, and then made an array around it. Obviously, it's not very nice, but it works. Um, so they're just the points, and it makes sort of a, a uh, what's the right word? A shape, that's the right word, around what's meant to be my house. I then add it. 
And then I'll actually set this to the polygon overlay. The view works much the same. In fact, all the views are the same. We've got stroke color, we've got line width, we've got fill color, and then we're just adding the view. And there you go. Uh, like I said, it's meant to be over my house, but I'm really bad at guessing coordinates, so it's sort of half over my house, half over my neighbor's, half over my neighbor's driveway. Clearly that's my house now. Um, but yep, that's an MK polygon. Um, and finally, the last one is the line. Works very much like the other ones. So it's just a big long list of latitude and longitudes there, and a count. Um, add it in, go to the view here. Uh, because this is just a line, we obviously don't have a fill color this time because you can't fill a line. Uh, we've just got stroke width and color, and then we're just returning the view. The nice thing about the built-in overlays is they're really easy to use. Um, and there we go, we've got a line. That's actually showing the route from my house to the bus stop where I go into uni. Um, it's a lot worse when you're actually walking it, trust me, because it's hilly. Looks easy there, believe me. Um, and that's the built-in overlays. The great thing about the built-in overlays is they're really, really, really easy to do. Um, you basically, rec all you need to do is actually get the coordinates and then use them. Um, if you want to do custom overlays, you can. There's nothing stopping you. Um, all the Apple even has some example code, which I will be going through in a little bit. Uh, but this is kind of tricky stuff. I'm actually running a little late. You have to draw the view yourself. There's no default. You can't fall back. You have to draw it using this draw map rect, uh, zoom scale in context. Your overlays have to be thread safe. You can't have an overlay that changes its data in the model partway because multiple threads may be accessing them and drawing them at different times. So if you are going to have custom overlays, they have to be thread safe if you want them to be mutable. Um, so Apple did release a couple of custom overlays at WWDC this year. They've now been released for everyone to play with. Uh, I suggest you have a look at them because they're well, they're well written um, for a start. The first one is breadcrumb and the second one's tile map. They did release other ones, so these are the most useful ones. I haven't got a picture because it was really hard to get a picture because uh, I don't actually have an iPhone. Um, I've only got an iPad and you couldn't run it till about last week. Um, but basically, it's a mutable polyline uh, that follows the user location annotation around. So if you were to turn this on on your iPad and then walk down the street, it would actually draw the line following you where you go. It does do a whole bunch of thread locking and unlocking to get around the fact that threads, that it has to be thread safe so you can actually update the data. It's also got custom drawing codes. It doesn't waste time redrawing the whole line every time it moves. Um, but if you do want to use a breadcrumb sort of thing in your program, grab that, look at it, use it, uh, modify it as needed. The other one here is uh, tile map. And first thing is it's like raster map. So you can overlay an existing map or a picture on top of an existing map. Uh, and you're like, oh, this is awesome. And I was so excited when I saw this because this is something I've been wanting to do for ages. It's nowhere near as cool as it first seems. Uh, the reason for that is uh, it can only take what's a geo, it has to be a geotagged picture initially. Um, so if you don't have a geotagged picture, you're completely stuffed. And even if you have a geotagged picture, you still have to actually cut it up into hundreds of tiles to actually overlay in the correct position of the map so you're not generating these huge images there all the time. There are programs to help you with this. It's still not easy. In fact, just getting a overlaid image, a geo, a geo tag image is nigh on impossible, and I'm not kidding. Um, I'm running out of time, so I won't do the demo, uh, but I will just do one last thing. This here is a geo tag image of, hopefully it loads, of, uh, Hobart in the 1850s. This is the other problem. That's 150 meg. Um, because most of them like to be TIFFs or some huge and scary proprietary ginormous format um, like ECW, which are really small, but then you have to convert them into geo TIFFs so you can cut them up to put them on the map. Uh, so the raster map thing is cool if you've already got the data in a format that's already easy to use. If you don't, it's more effort than it's worth to get it working. Um, but that is my talk. Um, so thanks for coming. That's my UTAS email address. Uh, I have other email addresses, but send that one to me if you want a serious question. My other email address is kind of like for, you know, if you don't like me. Um, that's my Twitter account. I warn you, I just fill it full of crap. That's Secret Labs Twitter account. Is that right? I didn't screw that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got it right. I just guessed it. Um, and thanks to Resync from Twitter for the meat planet picture. Uh, it's surprising how hard it is to find a picture of a meat Earth. Seems that Google doesn't have any. Twitter provides. 
Um, that weird map of the Mercator projections from Wikipedia and the Hobart maps from the Hobart Lands Department. Um, so, yep, yeah, that's my talk. Uh, I was hoping to have time for questions, but I ran late. Funny, in my test I ran early. But, oh, well, thank you very much.